Hello and welcome to another brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This time taking a look at converting footage, aspect ratio and sizes. So the example we're going to be looking at is converting a piece of footage which has got an aspect ratio of 4.3, uh, which is a square format almost, into a full high definition 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we want to do is make sure our project settings are at the resolution and the size and the settings that we want the final video output to be at. So, if we go into our project here, if we, in fact, sorry, if we just find it in the events section and then click on the inspector, make sure this is showing, and click on the info tab up here, and you can see it says 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second. That's what we want, 16 by nine, which is uh, a widescreen format. And if we click on modify settings, you can see that there's actually loads of different um, outputs that we could choose. If we click on other, that opens up some of the 4-3 ratios. And the clip we're going to be using is actually 640 by 480. So that basically is the number of pixels. So it's 640 wide by um, 480 height. So it's not quite widescreen, but it's a little bit wider than it is tall. <coughs> but we want the footage to end up at 1080p, 25 frames a second. That sounds great. So we're just going to make sure our settings are like that. Then let's hop back over to our footage. And if we click on this clip here, you can see if we click on the info tab again, it is 640 by 480, 25 frames a second. But how do we go about converting this into the right format size? Well, if we were to just grab this clip and bring it into Final Cut, you can see that by default, what it's doing is that it is actually filling the screen. You might think, wow, that's job done straight away. However, you may be getting different results, and I'm just going to talk you through the reason that might be. If we click on video, make sure we have the clip selected, sorry, from the actual event library. And over here, we can see that there's a spatial conform option. And if we click on this, you can see there's three options. There's none, fill, and fit. By default, you've probably got fit selected. And with fit selected, if we grab this clip and bring it into the timeline, you can see that we've got these black bars down the side. That's because, quite simply, the footage isn't wide enough to fill up this entire area, this being the 1920 by 1080. However, if you remember, the video footage originally isn't even tall enough, so it should actually be a square somewhere in the middle of the screen. So if we go back over to our event library and change this to none and bring this clip in, this is how big the actual clip is. It is not big enough to fill up anywhere near as much as the entire screen, which is why we have these two options available to us in terms of scaling up the footage so that it fills the area a lot more. Now. What can we do to, say, increase the clarity to upscale the footage to 1080p? And what options do we want to choose to best suit our project? And context is actually quite important here. For example, if we are working on a documentary, say, and we are working with lots of old footage, which has been shot at 4-3 ratio, you might actually want to go for the fit option, which is this option here with the black bars, as opposed to going for the fill option, which obviously fills the whole screen. The reason being is because there might be a lot of content in this upper region and this lower region that is going to be important to the footage. The footage was shot being able to see this full image, and by cropping it out, you may be losing something. So in a documentary format, having the black bars on the side isn't a problem because it actually reminds the audience they're watching footage which is recorded long ago because whether the audience is aware of aspect ratios or not, they can sort of understand um, the effects that older footage might have visually. However, in a cinematic environment where you're working with fiction uh, and a curated image, then something like changing aspect ratios is going to be really jarring and you only want to do it when you're acknowledging that you're doing it and you've considered the kind of effects that that might have on the audience, i.e. drawing attention uh, to the aspect ratio of the actual film itself. Something like uh, recently, for example, the Grand Budapest Hotel, uh, which actually plays around with aspect ratios. 
So if we were to click on this clip here, you can see that we've actually lost a lot of the sky and a lot of the lower region of the ground. Because if we look at the same area here, you can see we've got way more of the ground, um, whereas the other clip we only got just below the wheels and we only got up to the top of the tree, whereas now we've got this whole extra bit of data. So one thing that you could attempt to do is with the clip selected, we can actually turn on the transform tools by clicking on this button here. If you don't see this tool, click on this arrow and just choose the transform tool. We could actually scale this up a little bit so it's almost at the edge and then we could stretch the image, sorry, stretch the image out so that it fills up the entire screen this way. And what we've done here is that we've actually just reduced how much is being cropped by stretching the image out. So what you're going to get instead of the crop is distortion. So what I've tried to do is try to create a balance between how much distortion we're getting and how much crop we're getting so to preserve the image uh, as best as possible. However, if we say didn't crop anything and we just stretch the image to fill the screen, you can see everything looks fat uh, or short and myself in the background, I look like a dwarf fat hobbit essentially and the houses just everything just feels warped and wrong and I wouldn't advise doing that however a little bit of crop and a little bit of stretch could give you some decent results like this for example and for one shot it wouldn't necessarily be noticeable however if you're doing it to a whole sequence the audience might see what's going on here that said if you do it alternatingly then there might be some disparity between how actors look on screen if their faces keep on looking stretched and pulled it's just gonna give some very strange results so one thing we can do to try and increase the clarity of this because this um this indicator up here tells us how many how what percentage of the image we're actually seeing in terms of scale so i'm working on a full 1080p monitor this means that when I export this film and play it back full screen, it's going to use every pixel on the screen, whereas, as you can see, the viewer is only taking up a small portion of my screen. I've got all these other tools and library of stuff going on around this image, i.e. we are seeing, 39, we are seeing the image at 39% size of its actual full size. We were to change this to 100%, you can see we can't see all the image at once. However, what we can do is grab this little red box in this uh, preview context uh, viewer and we can see all the image and all the pixels that are available to us but the problem is because the image was 640 by 480 the image is quite blurry so what can we do to put some juice back into it well we could add some sharpness and noise and this is the technique that I would advise using however if we were to just go on and put some noise in here if we just drag the add noise tool and we boost this up, you can see that even the noise is actually going to be very pixely. And the reason that is, is because this image is still only 640 by 480. It's not adding new pixels, it is simply working within the uh, pixel density of the actual clip. So what we want to do is we want to turn this into a compound clip which will assume the native resolution of the actual project, which is 1920 by 1080. And then when we add in noise, we're going to get some fidelity and some fine noise that will make it look like pixels are actually there. It will cause um, slight um, color differentiation that will allow us to uh, create the illusion sorry, of a sharper image. So let's get rid of the noise. And let's right click on this clip and choose new compound clip. Now, if we go on to the info tab, you can see that this image is now 1920 by 1080. And if we add noise to it now, you can see that the noise is actually much sharper. We've got some really clean edges to the noise as opposed to last time where even the noise looked blurry. However, this is the wrong kind of noise. We actually want to use the film grain noise. We want to set it to monochrome because otherwise you can see we're getting all these like blues, greens and reds uh, color noise essentially, which is actually causing massive issues with the image. If we choose monochrome, all it's going to do is play around with the um, 
within the color spectrum of each area. So for instance, this car is, uh, sorry, this roof, you can see there's some green up here. So it's just gonna get thrown some darker and some lighter greens as means to cause pixel differentiation. But we, we don't want to use the, set the noise too high, maybe something around 0.8. And then we can also bring down the opacity just so there's some differentiation here. If we turn this off, quite a blurry image. We turn it on, it looks like the pixels actually exist. The other filter we want to apply is the sharpen filter. So we're going to grab this sharpen filter and we're going to drag it onto the clip. However, if we were to just boost up the sharpness now, you can see it's actually just going to make the noise we just created even more visible. So make sure you drag the sharpen and put it above the noise. And there you go, that's going to reduce some of them issues. Also, sharpen's one of them things that very quickly starts to make your image look pretty terrible. So only use it a little bit just to put, pump some of the energy back into the shot. So something around 10, I wouldn't recommend going much higher unless you're going for a really stylistic look. Now if we zoom out of this, choose fit, you can see we've got an image which is actually starting to look quite good. It's starting to feel like it's fitting the screen. And let's say actually this image still feels a little bit stretched. We can actually double click on this compound clip, which will take us into the compound clip. And we can actually just stretch this back out and, and we can start to favor the crop over the uh, distortion instead. And then choose done. And then click on this arrow back to go back to our timeline. And now we've got a clip that was actually 640 by 480, but looks like it has the clarity or at least the pixel information of something that is 1920 by 1080. If you're working the other way around, you're going from uh, 1080 widescreen to a 4-3 ratio, then the options to you are exactly the same. You're still going to have access to the, the fit and the fill spatial conform tools when you uh, access the footage from the event library. And you're also always going to have access to the transform tools to manually manipulate the image and scale it down accordingly. Let's say the image is really too big and you can't see any of the handles to transform the image. Remember, you can just click on this uh, percentage button up here, the, uh, the viewer controls, and you could say set it to something like 6.25 and it's going to show you all the information around the image. So if your image was way bigger, you'd be able to grab these handles here and reduce it back to the appropriate size. But that's it from me. That's how you uh, convert footage from 4-3 aspect ratio to widescreen. Uh, that's also how you can upscale, just a very quick technique, essentially. And hopefully this was useful to you guys. And please subscribe and share. And if you join me on Facebook and Twitter, actually, it's a really good place to learn about all the projects I'm working on, uh, why there hasn't been a tutorial for the last couple of weeks and stuff like that. But basically, I'm working on a really cool new film called Glove Compartment. And like I said, you can find all about this, uh, find out all about it on Facebook and Twitter. All links will always be in the description below. Also, if you don't know what aspect ratios are, you don't know um, footage format sizes, I'm also going to put a link to a website which tells you all about it. Probably Wikipedia, it might not be. I don't know, I haven't found such a website yet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.